right? So let's talk now about diseases. Now, the FDA won't allow us to say um, that magnesium causes disease directly. What the FDA, because if, the, if magnesium was the cause of a disease, then the FDA, by definition, would try to make magnesium a drug. And if it was a drug, it had to be regulated by the FDA, and it, then it would be uh, intended to treat, cure, or diagnose problems. And of course, the FDA is not going to have that with magnesium. But these are diseases that are linked to not having adequate magnesium. In essence, we know these diseases exist as a result in people having low levels of magnesium. And so probably the biggest class is heart disease. And there are a number of different types of heart disease. Uh, many of you may have like abnormal arrhythmic heartbeats. Um, those can be caused by magnesium deficiency. High blood pressure, which we mentioned earlier, um, can be caused by magnesium deficiency. Um, mitral valve prolapse is linked to, to, to uh, MVP, um, to magnesium deficiency as well. So several forms of heart disease. Now another one, which, which is more of a vascular, excuse me, vascular disease versus heart is that increased blood viscosity um, can be caused by magnesium deficiency. What does that mean? It means that magnesium being too low will cause your blood to become too thick and too sticky. And, and again, when your blood is thick and sticky, it puts more pressure on your heart, right? And that in and of itself is gonna drive up blood pressure and it's gonna create problems. So one of the reasons why this happens is magnesium um, helps keep platelets regularly working. See, platelets are what clot your blood, and if you don't have enough magnesium, then your platelets start to behave a little bit too aggressively, and they can overclot your blood. If you've ever had your blood drawn, and the phlebotomist says, wow, your blood is really sticky or really thick. It was really hard to draw. It was real, took a lot, long time to come out. It's because your blood's too thick. Your blood should come out of your vein when you get a venipuncture very, very quickly and very, very easy if it's healthy. Uh, healthy blood is relatively thin and comes out really, really easy. So heart disease, a big factor uh, as, a, as a disease or a state of diseases, if you will, with, um, with uh, magnesium levels being low. Another one is neurological disease. And I mentioned this earlier, magnesium deficiency, um, you know, because of its role in regulating nervous system function, we'll see neurological diseases. Now, there are a number of different neurological diseases as well. Depression is a form of neurological disease. Neuropathy, numbness, tingling, pain of the extremities um, is a form, you know, is a form of, of nerve disease as well. Migraine headaches are a form of of uh, neurological disease. So these are really super common nerve problems linked to magnesium. Migraine headache is actually, there's so much research now on magnesium deficiency tending to contribute to migraine headache. Uh, it's surprising to me how few doctors actually make that connection or actually tell patients to go out and get a magnesium supplement who suffer with migraine headaches. Um, now on a side note here, one of, the, one of the problems that happens with, with, with women who are giving birth to babies is there's a, there's a disease state called preeclampsia. And what oftentimes is done in a hospital scenario, if you've got a really good OB-GYN or you've got a really good doctor, is they will actually IV magnesium into you. It's one of the treatments for preeclampsia in many hospitals. And that's a form of, again, a form of high blood pressure. I just thought I'd mention that because many of you may have been told uh, during pregnancy that your blood pressure was going up and getting kind of dangerously high. Well, that might be a sign that you need more magnesium as well. So neurological disease, then we have musculoskeletal diseases. So diseases that affect your bones, diseases that affect your muscle tissue. So, you know, chronic muscle pain, fibromyalgia is one. And some would argue that fibromyalgia is actually a neurological disease, so it kind of goes back and forth between the two. It's a pain-based disease where the muscles hurt, but many people believe that it's because of nervous system dysfunction, and there's, there's truth to both sides of that. But fibromyalgia is one. We also have um, myopathy, which is basically muscle pain of non-fibromyalgic nature, so just generalized muscle pain, of, of, and not muscle pain because you've injured yourself, but just your muscles hurt, muscle aches, muscle pains. So magnesium deficiency will contribute to a lot of what we call tension pains in the body where your muscles just, again, we talked about this earlier, they become, well, I raced it, but your muscles can become over tight. And when they become over tight and the tension is in them, then the blood flow won't reach the muscles as aggressively. The oxygen won't get into the muscles as well. And they'll start to develop 
uh, you know, you'll start to, you can start to develop painful problems. Additionally, in the bone, we know that osteoporosis is linked to magnesium deficiency. So several different, uh, again, several different diseases that we know uh, that magnesium can definitely contribute to. Now, on, on other notes, there's some endocrine disorders, some disorders of, of hormones, if you will, such as diabetes. And I'm talking about more specifically type 2 diabetes, blood sugar diabetes. You know, we, there's a strong connection, and that's because you need magnesium to properly regulate insulin production. Magnesium is an insulin regulator, so if you don't have adequate magnesium, you can actually become more and more um, insulin resistant, but also remember that magnesium helps break down sugar. And if you don't have the capacity to break down sugar, your sugar levels can come up and then that ends up as uh, on the outcome of diabetes, which is elevations in your blood sugar levels overall. Hypothyroidism is another big one linked to magnesium deficiency. You need magnesium You need magnesium to regulate TSH, which is a, a hormone from, coming out of your pituitary gland called thyroid-stimulating hormone. TSH, magnesium regulates the production of that hormone. And if you don't have adequate magnesium, uh, again, there's a linkage to hypothyroid uh, disease with that particular problem. Sex hormone deficiencies as well. Again, we're talking about hormone-based diseases. So I said earlier, progesterone and estrogen and testosterone are all somewhat magnesium dependent in order for them to properly be produced. So um, those are issues. Now, estrogen dominance, or so many of you may have been told that you're estrogen dominant, that can be a symptom of magnesium deficiency as well. But then we also have, beyond that, we, ha we have constipation and irritable bowel syndrome. I mentioned that earlier uh, as, as, as we were talking as well. So kind of a long list of, of different disease states. And this, again, is not being as, as fully comprehensive. Magnesium is actually responsible uh, for playing a role in, in about 60 different diseases. These are just some of the bigger categories that I wanted to cover with you tonight so that if you're sitting here watching this and you're struggling or suffering with any of these problems, that you can look at potentially at look at magnesium as it might be one of the problems. So let's move on to the next part, which is now we know about what magnesium is, we know what the symptoms of deficiency are, we know where the foods are, uh, we know the drug interactions, we know what causes magnesium deficiency. So next, hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.